I'm Victoria. I started in last the year before last year. Um, um, it was a really tough road for a while. It still is at times. Um, I know a lot of students they get discouraged because they think they can't do it, but if you put your mind to it, you can do basically anything. Trust me, guys. We've been through a lot, and I know you have too. So, yeah. so I started back in January, and I had a wonderful baby. So doing this was really hard, especially at night, but it helped because he was at bedtime when I came back home. But definitely trying to do the homework and dealing with him and feeding and that. It was hard, but it got easier. And I'm glad I am where I am now, because now I can pay for him <laughs> all by myself now and daycare. Yeah, that's a big one. I know it was hard. We had teachers we didn't like doing this. We had there a lot of times where you know, like with your on hand classes, you know, you we would only have you know, shoot, we all had more people in our class, your class right now than what we did half the time. Oh, yeah. Sometimes we had four, maybe five people, almost every class. So when you're constantly having to do the same stuff over and over again on the same people, it gets very exhausting. Like it's not, because especially when you have phlebotomy. You don't want to get sick 20,000 times in one night. Um, but, you know, she had a one month old. I have a farm with 14 horses. So if somebody says that they're tired and that they can't do it because they just work one job, you can do it. Trust me. Anybody can do anything that you put your mind to. Um, yeah. And then um, externships, you know. Either you're going to go on somewhere that you are going to love, or you're going to go on somewhere where you're going to wish those five weeks were over, you know, 10 weeks ago. <laughs> it's going to be one or the other. Thankfully, I got a place where I love, and I just got, I start another job there in 13. So it's very, <coughs> as long as you keep your head up high and you just keep pushing, you will accomplish what you set forward to. There will be nothing holding you back except for yourself. And tell uh, Victoria, tell me a little bit about what you did at Premier Healthcare Associates when your externship. So I did basically a little bit of everything. In my third day there, I had my own computer, had, like I had everything. I was, you know, bringing patients back, setting the room up for injections. I did ultrasound guided injections where I, you know, worked the ultrasound screen. I worked in the infusion lab, so I did everything but, um, you know, insert the and the IV in and everything like that. I started the IVs, I mixed the medications, I stopped and pulled um, <coughs> the infusions out. You know, you take the blood pressure, especially like with the first patient, with the first time getting like infusion, like Remicade, it lasts almost five hours. So you have to constantly check their blood pressure and check their vitals to make sure that they're okay. So there's a lot of, a lot of stuff to do at Premier and I did, I did everything on the clinical side. I didn't do any administrative, but you know, they I enjoy the clinical more than administrative. Um, right now I'm doing administrative to kind of get, you know, the feel of how because there's like, you know, two parts of clinic, administrative and clinical. If you only do clinical, you're gonna have a biased mindset against administrative side. You're not gonna know how the scheduling works. You're not going to know how it is dealing with the patients when they first come in. So it's good to know how both, you know, sides are so that way you get experience and don't have that biased mindset. And then she's, she had a... Go ahead, Kendall. Let's <laughs> let's hear about your externship experience. My extern, externship, I went to Commonwealth, where she's at now, actually. And then I got offered another job as another pain management, and I'm at Integrative Pain Specialist. I'm there now. Love it. I am very easy. <laughs> I can't top her right now. <laughs> but I'm definitely still looking for more clinical. Okay. Well, 
right now Victoria is actually um, doing a temp job at Commonwealth Spine and Pain um, and it worked out well because Premier at the time when she finished up her externship did not have a position for her but lo and behold when she took the temp job you know job. right they so wanted, she, yeah they reached out to me first they wanted it filled within two weeks but they've actually held it for almost five weeks for me to finish this job now. So they're waiting for me. I start there on the 13th. Mm -hmm. So if you make a good impression at your externship, you're almost guaranteed a job. Mm -hmm. I can get, I mean, because they, because I went through my externship right at the end of um, 2018, beginning of 2019. So there was no position, but they were fighting to open up another position for me, but they didn't get it approved in time. But as soon as they got approved, they called me, and they are willing to wait, you know, five, six weeks. And she now will have the temporary job experience on her resume, plus all that time that she worked on her externship, and it'll just be a kind of a continuation. So it's going to look really good on her resume when it's all said and done. So, Kendall, tell us a little bit about what you're doing at Integrative uh, Pain Management Specialists. What I'm doing now is I am front desk. I do a little bit of billing and coding, but they're outsourcing that. Um, Dr. Seaman came to me, and I will be doing bracing now. I will be doing cool sculpting, uh, H wave for all the workers' comp patients, and actually, we had a nurse leave. So eventually, I'll be moving into the nursing position. Yes. Oh, you got to be kidding me. Yeah. I mean, like, she left a little bit sooner than he was hoping. So, I mean, once I am in the nursing position, I'll be the only one in the office who knows how to do both sides. Wow, that's yeah. nice. <laughs> so you're getting cosmetic with the cool scop sculpting, workman's comp, plus yeah. all that administrative? Yeah. Yep. And I do post-op actually tomorrow and Wednesday. Yeah, post-op tomorrow and Wednesday. His, his clientele is still kind of small. But, I mean, we have him logged in at least 60 patients a day. Mm -hmm. He wants to do so much stuff in a little amount of time. Because mm -hmm. he has his own physical therapy in his office. He, like, he does the injections. He does two types of TENS units in the mm -hmm. back. Mm -hmm. And I've only seen the one SES. Um, the final board series later. Okay. There's another one. The H-Wave is like... A Velcro patch, mm -hmm. but they're little needles, but it feels like Velcro, and they stick it on the back. Mm -hmm. And then it's just weird. It's weird. That's a new one. I mean, actually, I'm not familiar with that therapy. I'll have to but look he it also up. he does the um, CBD oil. He's actually wanting to get into medicinal marijuana. Oh yeah, he is. He is he's going crazy. So it's a holistic um, yeah. uh, facility, okay? Yeah, yeah. I don't have much it's understanding really of that. I mean, I know it's been there are lots of benefits for, it, but yeah. that's really interesting. I mean, it yeah. might be nice to be in on the the, the mm -hmm. ground floor or something like this. Wow. And there's not a lot of people who do it, and like he doesn't do any kind of narcotics. So, mm -hmm. I think um, yeah, pen, uh, yeah, fentanyl, yeah, fentanyl, nothing, none of that. And that's why he's doing more interventional, you know, outsourcing to all this stuff, and I like it. Well, good. That's fantastic. I mean, that's a nice skill set. You're going to have administrative and clinical from there, as well, like I said, some cosmetic, some oh, yeah. pain management, yeah. some workman's comp. I'll be doing the consultations and going on from there. Wow. Good for you. And again, she... They wanted to hire her on her externship, what, the second, second week? Day. Second, Se day. second day. That's right. That's right. I had her come over to campus that day, actually, and speak. So, again, um, just great opportunities are out there for you guys. And these two ladies have taken advantage of everything that's come their way. I mean, they were exemplary students. They never missed class. They went way above and beyond on any project or any assignments that were due for them. Um, and again, they had a very small class, and yet when it came time to do phlebotomy, they all got their phlebotomy certification. For phlebotomy, you have to get 30 successful venipunctures and 10 successful capillary sticks. And when you only have five people in a class, and of course one of you all has to be the phlebotomist, 
that means you know four people are essentially are your patients and you know you're going to use your instructors too I mean dr. Weems and I both take plenty of venipunctures uh, but uh, yeah that, no no well you know what I do not know I'm not sure I could go check I know she, I know we've both been putting in a lot of hours for some a big project we've been working on but anyways I don't know if she's in the faculty workroom or not but um, anyway, do you all have any questions for them? If, if each one of you guys could give one piece of key advice to this group, what would you tell them to do? Um, as soon as you make a goal for yourself, see if you can set it higher. Keep pushing yourself as hard as you can go. I mean, you might wear yourself out. You might get knocked down a few times. But the higher you set your standards, the farther you'll go in your life. I mean, it's fine to take a break, but don't give up on yourself. I love that I went here. I didn't work for three years straight, and for my last job, I was making like eight seventy-five. I'm making fifteen now. Like first job in three years, fifteen thousand. That I like that. I think that's what's good. And there's a lot, I tell you what, it sounds like there's a lot of potential for growth at his oh, office, too. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. And, I mean, take on every skill you can. I mean, by all means, everything that he has you doing right now, those are all resume builders. Hey, but before I forget, what EHR system does he have? It is. It's not Athena, is it? No. MediTouch. Medi Ooh, that's a new one. MediTouch. It's a lot easier than what you used to do. Okay. Sorry. But it's a lot easier. What, hey, what does Premier use? Premier Central. Okay. Any questions for these guys? Hey, again, two great resources up here. It's not myself or Dr. Williams, so you get a different perspective from them versus what we would tell you. Yeah. What was the most useful you did to study for your certification? I, don't ask me. I didn't study. <coughs> don't ask me. <laughs> what? Uh, I didn't study at all. Mm -hmm. oh, I would say what helped me the most was Dr. Cahoot. Dr. Cahoot and every, what is it, um, who's parent gave it to us, the actual certification was yeah. used. Mm -hmm. I went through every single one and I would write something at each question to help me. That's like with Medicare Part A, that's hospital, <laughs> because there's A in hospital. But, I mean, I would just write something simple as that. And was it part D? Part D is drugs. Yeah. Part D is drugs and D is drugs. And I do a lot of billing and coding. I've actually got into a bailing now, and now that's nothing but insurance. So that's how much insurance covered the brace, how much insurance they have left, what their deductible, yeah, their pocket, yeah. their propane, everything. When Victoria said she didn't study, the reason she can say that is because she worked so hard and did so much on all of those connects and on all those other resources I, above and beyond that don't let her say she didn't study because yeah, she went way I, above and beyond on everything. Else. I made like a lot of side notes. So like my I had like so many notebooks and like sticky notes where whatever was written up on the board, I wrote down. And then I would also go back and rewrite a lot of the stuff, like important stuff. I mean, I have, like I said, I have so many. And you know, like, how he does, like, the PowerPoint stuff at the top? I went on my iPad, and I wrote every single every slide. slide. Yeah. Every single. I bulleted the important stuff. I highlighted the important stuff. Anything to make the importantness pop out, I made it. And, because, I mean, you can't learn but so much as sitting here, zoning in and out, listening to him lecture. You have to be proactive. You have to write. Like, you cannot. I mean, yeah, like, I, we went over, like, the study guides and stuff, and we took them. But, and then again, with your certification, you cannot spend two or three hours studying the night before. You're going oh, no. to drain yourself. Mm -hmm. If you're going to study, you study 30 minutes every night for the week going up to your certification. Do not stay up late studying. Do not wake up early to study. Make sure you eat a good breakfast and don't stress yourself out. Don't second guess yourself. You cannot stress. Because as soon as you stress yourself out, you're going to forget the answers. You're going to forget what you studied. And you're, you know, 
it's not you might not have the potential outcome that you were hoping for. So you have to just stretch it out to mean you get to like you know your certification date a while ahead of time. So just study a little bit here and there. I mean don't and whatever if you know it, don't stress yourself studying it. Whatever you don't know, make that number one to study. Because I mean, some of, I mean, the phlebotomy and EKG, they were like, what, 120 questions? Now your yeah. CCMA, it's like 200 some questions. So, is it 230? No, it's, I think it, it's 180. It's 180. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 and then your CPT and CET are both 120, I believe. Yeah. yeah. And the CBCS is 122. Mm -hmm. So, like, you said, just, Take a few minutes every night and study. Don't stress yourself out. Study it for the morning out. And Kendall pulled off quite a rare feat in that she took her CCMA, which in the grand scheme of things is about as important as it can get because it is the programmatic certification. And then she came out. We took a picture of her with her new certification. Uh, they made a color copy of it. It was a temporary version. And then she went right back in and took her billing and coding certification. I mean, within like five minutes of completing essentially the culmination of everything that she, you know, gone through here at ECPI in 15 minutes, uh, in 15 months, then she turned right around and took that billing and coding certification. So, yeah, so I mean, that was almost four straight hours of intensive uh, certification examination, and she passed them both that same day. So I mean that you're you're talking to really top notch medical assistants, and I mean their externship sites both ultimately, uh, you know, made overtures to them to hire them and and so on. So that just goes to show you how well they were prepared right from the get go, and, and as soon as they got to their externship site, they were ready to work, and, and those facilities appreciated that. Well, like I've had more job offers having my CPCS versus. Mm -hmm. All the other ones. Hmm. Like Central like offered me a job, mm -hmm. but I'm already settled. And oh, I agree. Right now, you need to sit put for a while and soak up everything you can from integrative. Yeah, he 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 wants to do a lot. Does he want externship students by any chance? Uh, that he doesn't. That he does not want because I told him, you know, I'm an extern. I am the. I am the, I don't know how to say it, the last person that he hired, they were graduated for three years. I wasn't even like fully graduated when I started, and I was like the newest mm -hmm. post-grad that he had. Okay. He was kind of skeptical about it. But Tammy, who I worked with with her, I mean, I just sent him my resume and said, yeah, you're hired. Because I had my CBCS, everything. Okay. So, well, see, there you go. That's you again, team, pointing out how important these certifications are. They do open employers' eyes. All right. Any other words of wisdom or any other questions from this group that we have here? Okay. Of this group here, Ken has earned his certification in EKG. Um, nobody else has been through one of the classes that will have certs yet, but um, – but again, we do have one student that turned it, so I know Ken definitely understands how important certifications are. But just to tell everybody else, you know, I preach it and preach it and preach it, but you know, these two are living proof of how important those certifications are. We had a really hard teacher for EKG. Oh Lord, I cried. Please now I'm teaching the EKG. Yeah, it'll okay, be me. Like it'll be me. All right. Any final questions for Victoria and Kendall? All right, ladies, thank you all so much. I appreciate it.